Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry about the long absence. I took a job as head of engineering at a large company and it sort of turned my life upside down. My schedule went to, you know, became a mess. And I sort of had to readjust. On the plus side, I learned a lot of things that are not covered in YouTube or that I couldn't find good tutorials for uh, that I'll be posting uh, soon. Uh, but now I want to go back to our Go for JavaScript developer series, which I sort of put on hold and Sorry about that, but I'm getting now to a very important topic, which is concurrency, probably the most important topic. And it's one of those topics where I think that Go is objectively better than Node. That's not to say that Go is better than Node in every aspect. Some, in a lot of places, it boils down to taste. But I think when it comes to concurrency, Go is objectively simpler to reason about. In this video, I'm going to cover a lot of basics. The difference between concurrency and parallelism, the programming model that you, that you use in Node to handle concurrency, and in Go. And if you know these sort of things, you may want to skip to the next video. For now, let's just tackle these basic questions. All right, so what is the difference between concurrency and parallelism? Concurrency is how you reason about code that could be running simultaneously. And I don't mean ex that two pieces of code are running exactly at the same time in separate cores. I mean, like, how do you tell your runtime that you want this sort of two tasks to be running, you know, intertwined with each other, or maybe uh, this task A runs for a little bit, then task B, then task A, and so on and so forth. And concurrency is like the model that you're using for that. So to give you an example of what I mean, in Node, in the beginning, we use callbacks, right? If you wanted to say that there's this thread of execution, and then you wanted to do this thing on the side or come back to it when an operation finished, you passed in a callback. That led to callback hell when you had to do multiple uh, async operations. So libraries like async and then promises came to life. And promises allowed you to uh, flatten that sort of callback nested uh, mess that we had. And then generators came to life and then mixed generators and promises and we got async await, which is sort of syntactic sugar over that. That is like one paradigm. That is one way to think about tasks that could be running at the same time is to use that sort of event loop and you declare sort of tasks with async and you know that it's gonna fire off that task and it's gonna carry on, and but that task could run at the same time, even if uh, only one piece of code is running, which if you want to know more about that, I have a video on how that works for Node, which I'll post, I think is there. But coming back, the problem with Node is that you have to have their event loop in mind when you're coding. Now, this doesn't surface all the time because most of the time you're just doing input outputs. So uh, you suspend your function using await and you know that that's not blocking the thread. Most of the time, the fact that you're using uh, this event loop that you cannot block is not a problem, right? If it were a problem, Node wouldn't be as popular. Uh, what happens is that, let's say that you deviate a little bit from that model and you wanna do some long mathematical operation. Well, now you have to, you have to take that into account because you can't just block the thread in a huge while loop, right? Let's say you get a huge array or a huge JSON and you have to sort of operate on it before you put it in your database. Well, then you have to consider, you know, you're going to be blocking the event loop for a while. You have to maybe yield control for a while. You set timeout or something like that and come back to your calculation later so you can yield control back to the event loop and then get it back so you can continue processing this. Okay, someone might counter now and say, uh, okay, but Node wasn't built for that. Node is not uh, useful for that sort of operation. And that's true, right? Node is not to do mathematical operations. JavaScript as a language is not prepared for that. But it's something that you sort of have to know, okay? Now, Go went a different route. Go went with something called Go routines or green threads. And the the way to think about concurrency in Go is, is not, you know, you're not thinking about an event loop that you cannot block. Uh, in, in, in a perfect world, Let's say that we live in this ideal world. Creating threads to run things would be unbelievably cheap and fast. There wouldn't be any overhead. You can create thousands of them. Uh, you can create them, destroy them after they're done. You don't care. But that's very far from reality. When you're creating operating system threads, 
It's an expensive operation uh, where you have to uh, allocate data structures for that to hold all that data and that state. It takes a toll if you're constantly switching context for trivial tasks. And creating a thread is a bit uh, is not trivial, right? So what you tend to do is you tend to create thread pools so you can reuse threads that you've created and you manage that. If you want to do it right, it's very hard to do. The Go approach is I am going to build my own sort of thread implementation, uh, which is called a Go routine. I'm being very broad here, okay? Don't pinpoint every word. But I'm going to have thread pools and I'm going to have schedulers uh, on each processor and I'm going to let you give you this illusion that uh, you can create just threads so cheaply and you can just destroy them and create them again and reuse them and block them if you want. You can do whatever you want. And I'm going to handle all the complexity of how those go routines or green threads are scheduled in all the different processors or if I need to steal from one processor then give it to another or if it's a network operation and I need to use a specific different type of scheduling. Go is going to handle all of that for you. So the result is that instead of the node model where, you, where you're thinking about this event loop happening, what you're looking at is Go is going to be letting you sort of create threads. And if you want to block them, go ahead, block them. It's not going to, it's going to block that Go routine or that green thread, but it's not going to block the underlying thread. So what Go is going to do is it's going to sort of put your Go routine in suspended and it's gonna move on to execute other things in that processor. And it's gonna use, you know, async IO like, uh, like Node does for IO operations like network, you know, get requests and whatever. And it's sort of gonna free you from having to concern yourself with an event loop, right? It will have an event loop under the hood, but that's not gonna be impacting you in your cognitive load when you're programming. So I think that that's one of the reasons why Go is objectively better than Node. And I think that even the creator of Node, Ryan Dahl agrees with that. He he talked about how, how he thought Go was simpler uh, in, in an interview. I think I cover what concurrency is. Now moving on, parallelism is, okay, you have this concurrency. Parallelism is the ability to actually run your code in parallel in multiple cores. Uh, you can use this feature in Node to an extent with the Web Workers API if you spawn multiple processes, although it's not quite the same, because there you can't exactly share memory. See, with parallelism, it enables, you know, a new level of speed of execution and, and you can do things that you couldn't do before, like share memory between different threads, but it comes with a host of new problems that you didn't have to worry about in the no land, right? So for instance, now you have to use locks, maybe, if two Go routines are writing to the same data structure, or you have to synchronize, maybe a semaphore, or maybe you have to use channels, which is what we'll cover later, uh, which is a very convenient way to synchronize access to, to data. So yeah, that's the basic difference, why I think Go is better uh, when it comes to concurrency. And in the next video, I'm going to cover, you know, I'm going to show you examples of Go. And um, there, there was no code in this video. I'm sorry about that. But you'll see that it's so easy to manage with just the Go keyword be before a function. And then it's like that function will sort of execute at the same time. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next video.